G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm doing a series of videos with the local species Tetragonula hocking's eye. In this video, a forward fly attack and its management. Well, recently we had a fighting swarm in the area and I managed to capture a number of hives with it. But of interest was the fact that it also attacked quite a few of my weaker hives, including one hive which I had just started with what's called a brood lift method of propagation. That's where you lift part of the brood and put it into a new hive with some stores and it starts off that way. I'll have to do a video on that to show you. That's not this hive by the way. This hive I'm showing you only because if I, sh if I talk about this forward fly attack you're going to be bored shitless looking at an empty hive or a hive with no activity at least. So at least you can look at a hive where something's going on. I'm also videoing this because the flies are very active at the moment and one tried to get into this hive just before I filmed. So with a bit of luck we might see another attempt of the fly to get in. So, forehead flies, what are they? they? And I hopefully I'm saying that right, P-H-O-R-I-D. They are a small black fly, probably no bigger than a vinegar fly, those teeny weeny fruit flies, whatever you want to call them. And they will get into a hive, and if they get into a weak hive with numbers, they will basically blow it the same way as you can blow meat. They'll lay eggs in the brood and the pollen pots, and the whole thing will rot down. Now normally a mature hive can deal with this and fight these little blighters. It's interesting to watch them. They move extremely fast. And I'm sure one of the methods they get around strong hives or any hive and get in is the sheer fact that they move so fast that the defending bees can't keep up with them. And I watched one of these flies go into this hive, as I told you before. It's not a worry in a strong hive, because even if they lay eggs in a strong hive, a strong hive will catch the eggs or the young maggots and drag them out. It's a weak hive is where the problem. So what happened? I had a hive round the corner in the shade. It was a weak hive and during the fighting swarm attack it got hit and it lost all its defending bees and foraging bees and it got continuously hit for a week to such an extent that there were no more bees to be seen in the entrance or foraging. All of a sudden Two days ago, I started seeing little black flies flying around the outside. That's not a healthy sign. That means it was under attack. The more I sat there and looked, the more these flies started to appear. So it was being attacked and it was going to be infected. So I had to do something. So the first part of managing these sort of fly attacks is to observe your hives and note when the behavior changes. Luckily for me I caught it in time. So what did I do? Let's look. Okay, set that there, I've got to walk around here. I'm sure that's thrilling for you all. Okay, this is the hive in question that got attacked. No point showing you the front of it. Why? There's no activity. Totally dead. But, what's the first thing you do? Forward flies like dark shady areas. This hive was in the darkest part 
of my yard. So the first thing is remove it to the most sunniest part. Well, obviously not in the sun because it's 36 degrees today. They don't particularly like that, our native bee. So, but move it to a more lighty area. Foreign flies hate that. Second thing, in that shady area, lots of compost, lots of decomposing organic matter. That's another perfect environment for that fly. So again, we're removing the hive from that area. But that's not enough. This thing's already infected and I saw more flies flying around here just from the move, but it helped. So what's the next job you do? You actually open the hive. So we're gonna do that again. There's a, there's a fly flying out right this minute. And then I put a spacer in just to stop squashing any bees like that. Put that over here. I then lift this up. And uh, we'll put this where I can I put this where we can see everything. But what I'll do is I'll slide this right over there out of the way. Hopefully that's out of the way. It better be. All right. So, what's down here? Let's have a look. Excuse me while I do all this. See if we get this right. If you look carefully, you will see the flies. They're tiny little things, about half the size of a normal native bee. And you can see them darting around the bottom. I'm sure you can see it there. Note the brood I lifted, reasonably okay, but notice that it stopped producing any more babies. There's only two open cells at the top there. And why is that? Well, if you look around this hive, we're in drought in North Queensland. I've got plenty of honey reserves, as you can see there, there, but as a buzzsaw next door goes off, but there's no pollen. And this is why this hive has stopped reproducing. I've got no pollen. So that is the problem as well. And I'll just put this on pause a sec. No, I won't. We'll keep talking here. So you can see the fly there. And you can see a container for catching them as well. Also look, gee, I'll have to see if I can get this. If you can see down there, whoops, the first signs of decomposition. See that moist area down in there? That moist area is where the fly has laid eggs. You can actually see the eggs down there. See them? So we've got eggs down there already, ready to hatch. So we've got to deal with them as well. So we've got some eggs, but the flies are there. So how do we deal with this? Oop, forgive me for all that. Hopefully you can see that. Well, don't be afraid to be brave. You can actually blow a lot of these flies out. Now, when they get blown out, see there's one there, they all fly up. They hate light. They utterly hate light. Notice the bees are weakened in this hive, so they don't care. But these buggers, they hate the light. So when you blow them out and blow in, they eventually fly out, but they don't hang around, they fly away. They don't go back in here, hate the light, they're off. And they go somewhere else altogether. Any you find around the place, you can squash. The other thing is you build a fly trap. This is uh, just a little old medicine cabinet bottle. Oh yeah, it's caught a couple already. It contains honey, water,